So probably the first thing is just look at some of the tips that I'd recommend just in regard to you know, how to maximise the benefits. Um, first of you become aware, my suggestion is if you've got um, some new projects and you want to work out how they, they might be either partly funded by other state or federal government, um, we certainly often recommend people, people have a discussion with Peter, close relationship over an extended number of years now. Um, and it, he's always a good sounding board as to what programs might fit uh, potentially even uh, other people who are doing similar things uh, and certainly reaching out to Tony in regard to state government grants, uh, Tony Dyer uh, will be also useful. So um, connecting is really one of the first things I'd recommend people do to look at what might be available. Certainly approaching us, we have reasonably knowledge in regard to what programs, but often I often run things by Peter um, in regard to things that clients are looking to, to, look to do. Certainly once again, um, making sure you're signed up to Oz Industry and State Government newsletters and contact lists. Uh, if you go onto the Oz Industry website, you can basically put your email details in and they'll keep you informed about what program's going. And that's always a good starting point to identify those funding packages that you might get advantage from. One area that, that I've found um, a number of clients are using is that they keep an eye on who the potential grant recipients might be, particularly when they're focused around larger grants um, where they might say, well, that doesn't apply to me because I'm not large enough to get that grant. Uh, but you might have some particular uh, expertise, skills, services that potentially provide some benefit to one of those grant recipients. So two things I would suggest that particularly small businesses do is keep an eye on the people that, that might potentially be grant recipients. Once the grants are announced, there's always a public announcement of who received the grant and how much they received. What I'd suggest is you reach out to those organisations, particularly where you feel you've got some skills, services or expertise. Um, now, you might, people say, well, how to reach out? Uh, reach out to someone like Peter, say, do you know someone in this organisation I might better talk to? Always a good, a good place to start. Um, so you reach out through LinkedIn, um, being connected, as Peter mentioned before, with the university and uh, the university's got, um, uh, is heading up a program called SME um, Advantage. Um, so if you reach out to uh, Sarah, who runs that program, um, uh, she's always a good contact point for uh, maybe connecting small to mid-sized enterprises with uh, the larger enterprises uh, that receive those grants. So using those connections are really, really important for small business. Uh, and don't certainly exclude, um, take the view of to exclude yourself potential, some of the accessing, some of the grant funding. Um, in a collaboration sort of way. Um, and probably the other thought I started with is what's important is that you be, and this has been said quite a number of times, but I've actually seen it in action quite often, um, is a lot of um, the people who get grant funding are, are fairly ready with projects. Um, they just are waiting for opportunities as to how they might be funded. You know, often people say, well, how do they get their information together so quickly um, to get a grant application in? largely because the grant application is already ready to move. They potentially have been uh, used in previous grant applications uh, and then need to be altered simply just to meet the current grant application requirements. But, but I would say that 50% of the grants that I've seen that have been successful were actually already, uh, uh, the projects were actually already in the pipeline uh, in some form or other. Uh, so the businesses were ready to go.